Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. A motherfucking legend in here smelling like fresh weed and fresh leather. There you go, Snoop Dogg. Snoop. What up, though? What up, though? What's happening? Yeah, we show we uh we have been giving uh the people that we feel deserve their flowers their flowers. So we're giving you your flowers today. That's there, why you there, see there, the balloons. There's not Snoop. enough flowers for you. Nah, though. definitely not. <laughs> there's really some, not. We got some liquor for Snoop today. Get on his side, not on my side. Yeah, because you know, he already drunk. He been drinking all night. <laughs> <laughs> Some ace of spades for you. Oh wow, niggas gave me an old saying. bottle too. Y'all gave me an old bottle. Got fingerprints and shit all on it. It's gotta be a regift. I already know what it yeah. is. <laughs> we got food over there for you. For you. We got weed that. for you. All types of shit. Thank you. Man. Thank I don't think Snoop wants our weed. No, I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you smoking nowadays? Snoop? Bubble gum. I got some bubble gum cushion from the Bay Area. What's that? I don't. It tastes sweet. Uh, I, I'll put it in the air later to let you get a your dose of it. Is it indigo or sativa? It's indigo. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, I, I love I'm indigo. a man. <laughs> okay. So you said, so with all the stuff that you do, all the businesses, all the acting, everything, the music, the tours, what made you say, you know what, you want to uh, help Def Jam out? Well, first of all, I'm a fan of Def Jam Records. Um, as a rapper, as a kid, as a man, I just missed the mystique of Def Jam Records and what it meant to hip hop and what it was all about. That mm -hmm. was the only label we was competing with when I was on Death Row Records was Def Jam because they were like the epitome of what hip hop was supposed to be. And I just feel like I still have a lot in me. I feel like I have a lot of information, wisdom, guidance, and tutelage for a lot of these artists. It's not so much about me because I'm not signed to Def Jam as an artist. I'm only creative consultant executive. So it's not about me as an artist. It's more about me helping to develop artists and put the spirit back in Def Jam the way it's supposed to be. Now there was a period uh, when the West Coast saved Def Jam before. Yeah, Warren G. Yep. And my pen has something to do with that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you wrote uh, on regular? Like I said, my pen has something to do with that. <laughs> That's a hip-hop tidbit we never knew. I mean, because we was trying to protect the homie from Suge Knight at the time. Suge was taking everything, so we wanted to make sure Warren G had a dope record without him being able to get it. So we silently, me and Corrupt and a few others, went to work for Warren G to make sure that his record would be what it was. Wow, so, so y'all didn't mind him signing the Def Jam? Y'all didn't want we him? We wanted him to sign with Def Jam. We all wanted to be on Def Jam. Def Jam was a dream label. Mm. You gotta understand, Public Enemy, Slick Rick, LL Cool J, EPMD. You understand what I'm saying? Like, this is foundation to to hip hop mm -hmm. for us. And, and Def Jam was just the ultimate label. They had the best street teams, mm -hmm. they had the best videos, they had like, they had Units of people that would come there. They had Rockefeller, Murder Inc., fucking Rough Riders. They just, everything was attractive to Def Jam, and I want that spirit back. And the tours, wow. they used to put come together their now. best tours back the then. The tours too. and the video game, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Remember they had the game? Yeah, the video game. Yeah, I remember Def Jam Vendetta. Guess, yeah. who, guess what the star of the game was? Snoop. And I wasn't even on you Def was, Jam. You know on Def Jam. Damn. Damn. Snoop LL. Snoop LL. Gangsta shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, do you get that, how do you get that back with so many artists wanting to go independent and go the independent route and saying they don't need the labels? How do you get that? How do you restore the feeling? Well, independence is good. It's amazing. I, I respect that. But there's something called global. And independents don't give you that global approach that, you know, some of these majors can give you. To take you outside of America, to put you in front of billions of people, to take you to India, to take you to Southeast Asia, to take you to Africa, to places that your independents can't really monitor or really, you know, take you to that next level. So that's the blessing of having a major is that they can put more spotlight and more attention on what you do. Mm -hmm. You saw Meek Mill was saying he's never seen a check from his record label ever. Is that a common thing for artists to sign to a label and get your advance but then not see any money later? Well, it's about that word recoup. See, a lot of people don't mention that word. When mm -hmm. they put money up front, that means they want money back. And if you haven't made the money based off of your record sales or whatever your deal consists of, then you unrecouped. And that times leads you not to get any more money. That's why they like giving you money up front so you can owe them. But in the independence world, there's really no money up front, it's you taking the risk and you receiving everything. So what about you with, with your first album? Because your first album was one of the biggest albums ever in the history of life. I was fighting a murder case, so I couldn't really financially you know, gain like I needed to because my finances were spent on the case to make sure that I was gonna have my freedom. Um, and that's what they was you know, saying every time it was time for me to get more money. It was like, well, we, we gotta make sure you safe and you beat this case. So I wasn't tripping off of the millions of dollars that I was supposed to get because the lawyers and the team that Suge put around me did their job to get my freedom. Do you remember how much I had to spend on that, Okay. Millions, like in the, in the, in the tens of millions. Shit. Because we brought technology to the case that had never been seen before. 
they had a 3D um, re-dramatization of what happened that day. And it was the first time I ever presented in court. Because mm-hmm. my lawyer was in the, the forensics and the DNA and all of that. That was when it was just becoming mm-hmm. a thing. So my lawyer was ahead of the game by spending a lot of money on showing the jury exactly what happened. Well, first, you know what? We didn't say happy birthday to Snoop. Snoop just turned I 50 know, last week. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Snoop. How does 50 feel, yeah, man? When I see you feel. 50, I'm like, you know what? <clears throat> I'm, I, I can do it. Uh, like I was telling one of my homies when I was young, 50 was old. You know, when you see <laughs> yes, somebody fact. 50, they'd be walking with their back lent over. That's and right. They, mm-hmm. Now we, we, we look at it like 50 is cool. I got six grandkids. I got a beautiful wife, some kids at home that love me, and I'm still doing what I do. I don't feel like I'm getting old. I feel like I'm getting better. I feel like the information and the knowledge that I have now could be used to, to spread around to the people who call me Uncle Snoop. So now I can give them real information and treat my nephews and nieces the right way by giving them game that they need. And edges laid like a motherfucker, hair healthy. <laughs> come on, Charlamagne, you know I come from that side of the family where you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's a lot of brothers, I ain't going to say no names. I'm looking at they one. They dredges hanging oh. on. For <laughs> dead life. I'm looking at one right now that ain't got no hair in no, the corner. Zero. Forget me. I'm talking about like the dredges like, be holding on like, man. let me go. <laughs> go. Not another day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did the pandemic teach you? Oh, man. Actually, it, it it's what I love because I love being to myself. I love being self-centered and being able to breathe and to think and to be creative. It taught me that um, people need to understand what life is about and really, you know, treasure it and, and spend time with their loved ones because you never know when they're going to leave. Just lost my mom a couple of days ago. and uh, Sorry to hear that. Thank you. It's like it's heavy on my heart, but at the same time, I know that these are things that she loved for me to do, Mm -hmm. to make people smile, to make people laugh, to spread joy. So the pandemic taught me to love people more, to to be more up close and personal, and to be more understanding because there's a lot of mental health going on. And we all have it, but we Mm -hmm. just ashamed to say it. So I'm just wanting to be upfront about it to say, yeah, we all deal with mental health issues. And the pandemic showed me how to be a better person when dealing with other people and myself. Is that why that, the song, I Love Anxiety with, uh, how you pronounce the name, Malaya? Malaya, yeah. Malaya, man, that anxiety record's so so hard. Like, right, because we go through that, right? Yeah. It feels like we all go through that, but it's starting to become cool to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, if you said it maybe five years ago, people look at you like you're crazy. Mm-hmm. If nobody wants the stigma of, I'm crazy. No, I just want some help. Mm-hmm. I just want to know what's going on in my head. Maybe I'm traumatized from my family from the, 50s or the 40s from the slavery and the segregation and it's spilling off into my DNA. You never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, going, I've been going to therapy once a week for like five years now. Do it work? Yeah, I mean, but you know, it's not just therapy. Therapy gives you the the, the language and, and the understanding of what it is you're going through, but then right. you got to actually start doing real processes to, to heal for real, for real, you know? Yeah. And well, it's, it seems like when you're getting therapy, the most drama comes your way because it's going to test you to see if the therapy is actually working. Absolutely. You, do you go? Or? Me and my wife went to therapy about like maybe 12 years ago because we was having some rough times. And um, I spoke to a couple of friends of mine and they was like, man, it, it ain't going to get no better if you and her just keep arguing and trying to figure it out. You need to put somebody in the middle mm-hmm. who's going to play no sides. Mm-hmm. And when we went to go see the therapist, it was the best thing that could happen to us because... We had somebody that wasn't on my side or her side. They was just on the truth. And it helped us become a better, you know, a better family to understand how to deal with each other. And, and condolences, too, on your queen, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like, thank you. I heard that, uh, what's the song? Um, the song with D Smoke and, and Wiz Khalifa. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Steady trying to deal with this pain. Man, I, when I heard that, I'm like, and that's the that last had song to hit out. different now. It do, and you know what's crazy? The artist Camino from Mississippi, shout out to Camino. He was calling me like, Unk, don't put this album out without me being on it. Let me get on it, please. And he sent me that song, and I heard it, and I was like, this is dope. But I wasn't listening to it for that reason. I was right, just like, it's dope. Right. And I, he was like, I want Wiz on it. I put Wiz and D-Smoke. Mm-hmm. Then I'm dealing with life, and then my mother passed. And I'm like, why is this the last song on mm-hmm. the album? This is God. This is the Absolutely. angel. This is what she wanted me to see, that you're going to deal with this pain, but you got to push forward. Now let's talk about this album. What was your mind frame on this album? Because there's some songs you rapping on it, some songs you just letting people go, some songs you talking. So what was the mind frame of, of doing this album? Algorithm. Mm-hmm. Um, the algorithm is fucked up right now. It's mm-hmm. based off of computers and some machine telling you what's hot, what's not, and what to play. When it used to be, DJs would fill records on the streets, 
come bring the motherfuckers in here, mm -hmm. break that shit, and let it be what it be. So that's what I'm doing with this algorithm project. I'm just making great music with artists, myself, established artists, new artists, producers that I love, and just trying to put feeling back in music because music just sound good. It don't feel good no more. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm slaps. I, I, told, I came here this morning and said that, but it don't, it's not a Snoop album. No, it's not. Yeah, okay, it's, a it's a compilation. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Like. It's just using me as the front guy to get the attention and the awareness on Dev Jam and what I plan on doing at Dev Jam. So you have to use the biggest thing in the building, which is me. Mm -hmm. You put my name out there and say, this is a Snoop Dogg project, and you start listening. You're like, damn, it's it's got a Mary J. Blige song, a Usher That's song, right. a new Red artist here. And man, come on, Red I Mel. Fab Fab to everyone. Come on, I came out here first. That's what people don't know. Mm -hmm. When I first got the Dev Jam situation, I wasn't even signed yet. I flew out here and rented the studio, and Who Kid helped me get it together, and I went and got Benny the Butcher and a bunch of rappers that I knew that was hot. That record's so hot. Mm -hmm. And pulled them all in and was like, I'm going to save New York first. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is it ain't hip-hop like it used to be out here. And I'm a nigga from the West Coast saying that. And I want hip-hop back in New York. I want the feeling back. So what I did was grab some artists that I knew who represent hip-hop. Jadakiss, Red Man, Method Man, Benny the Butcher, Buster Rhymes, Fab, Dave East, and put them on the project to let New York know that I feel the same way y'all feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Buster busted everybody ass. No, I, no, that's hard to say. I ain't gonna say that. Benny got busy too and kissed, but Buster was really Boy, in his Buster. bag in that on Boy. that one. Yeah, <laughs> but he was last. You know yeah. when you're the last that's thing you right. get to hear that's everybody right. else. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And he requested that record. I had played a snippet on Instagram. And Buster Rhymes called me. Yo, General. Yo, <laughs> send me that shit. Uh -huh. What is that? So I had to send him the track, and he helped me make the record. I wanted Jada on it. But Jada wasn't here. He was at the, uh, the DMX tribute in L.A. when I was out here. Mm -hmm. So then I ended up getting him on it, and it all just came together. It's like the spirit of hip-hop. Like, when Snoop put the bat signal out, they show up. Who would you want to see, since we're talking about Buster, who would you want to see Buster go against on the verses? Buster rhymes on the verses. Damn. Me and him was just talking the other day. He said, find me a worthy opponent. <laughs> Missy. I'm like, this nigga sound like uh, a Maximus on Gladiator. <laughs> Either Missy or LL. I think LL, I think that would be a good Missy one. or LL? LL would be the thing. I wouldn't see, I can't see Missy because it's too much respect between them two. Mm -hmm. And there's no disrespect between LL and, and Buster, but men tend to, it's a better duel as opposed to he's going to be nice to Missy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. He ain't going to be nice to LL. It's and LL ain't going to be nice to him. I get what you're saying. But performance-wise, I can see. because If he Missy... brings Spliff Star, it's a wrap. Uh, you know Spliff. You know if he, he brings, brings Spliff Star. I'm going to tell you all this. <laughs> I said this shit for the past 20 years. It's only two motherfuckers I'm not getting on stage after. Buster Rhymes and Spliff Star. <laughs> You thought I was going to say two I other niggas. Two no, <laughs> nigga, them two niggas. I will not. I refuse to. Mm -hmm. Them niggas right there on stage, oh, my God, they are the epitome they of are. showmanship, mm -hmm. of just energy and what a show's supposed to be. I used to go on tour with them, right, and I used to get on after them, and I used to be so fucking mad because sometimes the crowd would be like, nigga, we already out of energy, nigga. We ain't <laughs> got nothing left. So that's what they bring, and they make it an experience every night. It's never... A weak show is always a great show with them. So as far as getting in the versus battle with Buster Rhymes, if he brings Spliff Star on the performance side, it's curtains. Tim could come out with Missy. They could do the little shoulder yep. stuff they used to do in the Missy video. Have her dancers. Coitins. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you were up here, uh, I think two times ago, you were talking about your top five and you, you didn't mention him, and then we talked about that, and he got a little upset. But we see you squashed it out. How was that conversation? Because I know y'all had that conversation. Man, I love Eminem, and the thing is that we love hip-hop so much, we competitive, we battle rappers, so that was supposed to trigger that in him. But we brothers and we family, so we learned to, to appreciate each other for what we do and how we get down, and we had a long conversation about the respect that we have for each other and the way we need to talk in public about each other. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? And I apologize to him and I let him know. And I'm just better at myself. You know what I'm saying? I make mistakes. I ain't perfect. I'm Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Well, cheers to the Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah, oh, you what you know about that? And M and, uh, what you know about that, Tim? Huh? <laughs> Mary J. Blige. Hello. How did you feel when you got that call? In L.A.? Mm. Well, Dr. Dre is one of my closest associates. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I knew he got the call, I was figuring that I was going to get a call soon. But to, to add... Eminem, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige is like special. 
Mm -hmm. Because it's like this is his super friends and this is his super bold moment to actually show people why he is, you know, who he is. You know, it's hard to explain his method to madness. But when you look at everybody that he touched, look at our careers, look at how successful we are without him. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't make it without the person that put him in. We've done just fine without him, and we still maintain that relationship with him. So the Super Bowl performance should be something special because I know he he really want to get the people what they want. He really, really, this is an L.A. moment. Yeah, and Dr. Dre is a moment. West Coast guy. So what kind of Dre and Snoop we going to see now? Because you know it's, just, it's, it's a lot of Dre and Snoop. So what, <laughs> I, what, what y'all going to do on that halftime show? Too. It is PG-13, <laughs> but remember we made clean versions. Okay, okay, okay. I, I would want to hear some death row. Yes. Definitely want to hear some death row. It slide a G thing or something in there. I mean, that just that record definitely just got to have G thing, right? Yeah. I definitely would want to hear uh, Steel. Still representing for them gangsters all across the world. And yeah. California love. Definitely. Gotta do gin and juice. Gotta do California love, too. But remember, it's not just me and him. Mm -hmm. You gotta let Eminem slide out and do his... Uh, nowadays, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They gotta bop that. Then you gotta let Kendrick come out and bop one with him. And then I'm sure Mary J. Blige yep. gonna pop that thing. She got one him. So I'm anxious to see exactly what the format and how it's gonna roll out. I'm just here to show up and show out and be there for my guy. You think it was political that they had to have five hip-hop icons and you know mary's the queen of hip-hop so on the halftime show just to get it done because i feel like it could have just been you and dre and y'all could have bought everybody up it could have but shout out to jay-z for um going to war mm -hmm. and making that thing happen putting the first hip-hop act on the stage and you know people don't give him credit for a lot of things that he do he moves his hand mysteriously behind the scenes mm -hmm. and he does a lot of great things for people and i want to give him a shout out for fighting for Dr. Dre, because I know that that's a part of my legacy that he fought for. So I appreciate you. I heard it was a fight it was between you and somebody, one other act. Oh, oh, they didn't want, they didn't want us up there. I, I don't know if they didn't want y'all, but I just know it was a. Little... Oh, they was gonna say either uh, them or the, uh, yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. But come on, man, it's not like <laughs> come on, man, it's Inglewood. Yeah, it wouldn't make no sense. Long no Beach, sense Compton, Inglewood. Yeah, Taylor Swift wouldn't have made no oh, sense. Oh man, yeah, please. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. <laughs> Nah, Ellis Wood wouldn't have made no what sense. What is this? I Heart Awards? What's going on? We've been begging Kanye to come out there and rush on this team. Yeah, Kanye, I got a ticket for you, my nigga. I got the back door open for you. I'm going to let you in. No, I'm just playing. Now, you, you got some really dope women artists on this album. Was that intentional? Very. Okay. Very intentional. And a lot of it just came to me. It just came my way. Um, some of the artists just were brought to me. And I didn't even have a deal at the time. I just was making great music and people was coming to the studio. And I was like, damn, these females sound good. And they don't sound like the girls that's out right now. And they saying something a little different. So I was like, let me go in and make some records with them. And we just made records. And, like, that's what I'm about right now. I'm about just the feeling. Mm -hmm. If it feel good, feel good to you, must be good for you. What Talk inspires to you to still make music? Because, you know, you do so much, but you're always in the studio. You're always listening. What inspires you to still listen? And, and when I go out. Cause I'm a DJ too. I get that DJ bread mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. When I go out, Sorry, I'm, Envy. Like, no, the DJ bread went up after the pandemic. Boy, too, you better know it. Did, 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 <laughs> boy, especially you if you, especially bag, if you can rap some of your own songs to uh, the DJ uh, bread. <laughs> <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> I can't do that. I can rap some of your songs. <laughs> I mean, if I had to choose, I mean, damn, Snoop, oh, DJ, and Envy. <laughs> Come on, man. This I would take Snoop too. You know, you know what? I get both. Envy, just open up. You know how I do, you know how I present it? DJ Snoop or Delic versus Snoop Dogg. I saw that. Wow. So I'm giving you a little bit of everything. And then when I'm out there DJing, I'm listening to music, right? And I'm like, damn, it don't feel good when you ain't got no new music and you're in the club and you got to play shit from 30 years ago or 25 years ago. So it makes you want to say, I need to get me a hot record right now. So when the young rappers call me, if it's NBA young boy or this rapper, I'm quick to get with them. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I don't even charge them because mm -hmm. it's about knowing what they're about to do for me, but thinking what I'm about to do for them. Mm -hmm. right? Talk to me about uh, Nefertiti. Wow, she's so dope. Uh, my boy L.T. Hutton brought her my way. He's been um, telling me about it for a long time, and he had a particular record that I like from her. And I, I was sure, but I wanted Who Kid to make, give me my confirmation. So I sent him the record, and he sent her about three or four beats, and he called me back the next day. He was like, man, this motherfucker got it, nigga. She sent back three hit records, mm -hmm. and wop wop this and that. So then we did the Red Man and Method Man song, and I gave it back to Battle Cat. I'm like, I need a hook, so figure it out. And nigga put her on the hook, and she barred up at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With Red, I'm like, because, you know, in the beginning, it was like, we need to take her off because this Red Man. And we was like, shit, listen, hold on. 
she went in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a new artist that we plan on putting on Def Jam Records. It, 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 it reminds me, she don't remind me of Rage, but the energy, when yes. you used to hear that yes. lyrical woman on this record with all these lyrical dudes. To come through with dudes, them men, yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yes. To push. Where's she from? She from? I think she's from the Midwest. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then you're also doing a kids album, right? Yeah, Def Jam Kids. I wanted to uh, create a kids department for Def Jam because I got six grandkids and some of the information that they shoot my kids, my grandkids ain't, ain't right. And some of the teaching and the information, it's just not within the guidelines of the way I want kids to learn and the way that they should be taught. What you mean? What, what are they learning? What are they getting it from? You watch the world. You're looking out there. You're seeing what I'm seeing. Mm. They're teaching different perspectives of life, and it should be an option. It shouldn't just be one way. It should be we're going to teach you about life, love, and how to treat people, how to treat yourself through this good music, and just by making things that are kid-friendly and letting it hit, come from our voice. Because a lot of times you have other people trying to teach our kids when mm -hmm. it should be us teaching our kids, our culture, our history, our everything. Because mm -hmm. if you're getting it from them, you're only getting his story. You ever, you know, Snoop, you ever thought about doing a documentary on you and your evolution? I'm talking about from the beginning when you first came out, Wild Snoop, Bitches ain't yet beholding the tricks to 50-year-old grandfather Snoop who has seen so much life has evolved as a man, a father, a, a husband. Have you ever thought about that? Just showing people that growth is possible? Not really, but if I do it, I think you should probably interview me. I think that'd be dope because mm -hmm. you would get some good insight on your perspective. You looking in from the outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You seen the wild Snoop. You seen the one that was on death row, the one that grew up on No Limit, the one that came out with Pharrell that became a father, became a football coach to where I'm at now. So you would be able to have a different perspective, and I would like that because it's a different angle. Absolutely. It's I wild watching you and Fat Joe change and evolve. Right. Like you two <laughs> brothers were the, were the brothers that if you seen, if you look the wrong way or act the wrong way, you probably get punched in the face fast. But to see you both of you brothers evolve, it's the, it's the, it's the craziest and thing. And you know where most of our evolution came from? At Minister Farrakhan's house after um, Biggie got killed. Wow. I called Mr. Farrakhan and I wanted to get with all of the rappers and he helped me put together a day at his house. Mm -hmm. And Fat Joe drove on a bus and he um he had some words for Ice Cube about, you know, the West Side Connect as far as like how the East Coast loved Ice Cube and protected him and had his back when N.W.A. went bad on him and how could he do this? But it was just a minor conversation that was needed mm -hmm. and it made me respect Fat Joe because I seen he was a real man and he really loved Ice Cube. And for him to say that, that took a lot of love to say that, I'm hurt behind you doing that and we love you and spoke for New York. And me and him got real cool and close after that to where I watched him grow, he watching me grow and just to be on his podcast to be able to see us both hold that conversation and be grown men, it's evolution. I feel like they need that today too because some of these younger artists, they are going at it. And I'm like, who is the person or how can some of these issues be resolved? Because I think social media just adds another layer. But it's about growth, though, Angela, because I had to grow into who I am. When I was young, I didn't have no patience. I didn't give a fuck. I wanted to get busy like everybody else. I wanted to fight, do everything everybody else wanted to do. But as you get older, you get kids, you understand what life is about, then you got to separate yourself. A lot of these rappers don't know how to separate just yet. They don't know how to close the gap. And I spoke to that, you know, years ago about closing the gap. And that's when a rapper is up here and his friends are down here. The only way to close the gap is if the rapper goes back down. Because they're not going to come up to his level. And that's the problem with the industry. A lot of these rappers got to understand that you got to separate, you know, personal from business. It's so hard, though. Because especially if you're a rapper and you, say, are heading up a label, or you're the president. Mm -hmm. And then you're cool with your artist, but mm -hmm. then you have to make some business decisions that aren't cool. So it's sometimes hard, right? Don't you think to, to separate? It's hard to separate, but you gotta be who you are because I watched Death Row, I watched Bad Boy, I watched Def Jam, I watched Murder, Inc. And all of them had certain street elements to it. And then they had a business element to it. And you look at their longevity based off of how did they conduct themselves in the business atmosphere? Were they street or were they business? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when they were street, that's why they ain't in business no more. How do you and your wife manage to separate business from, obviously that's a super personal relationship, you're married, right. but she's your manager. So are there times that she can talk you, like do things that you don't want to do or you all bump yeah. heads? That's some fly ass the, shit though. On the, the business. Have your wife be a manager, that's fly. Does she have the final say? <laughs> well, I feel like, you know, she got the only say. Yes. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's what I needed because mm-hmm. can't nobody else challenge me or, you know, put me in a level of understanding and respect now, especially in the business. I mastered this shit. It's called show business. When I was on Death Row Records, I mastered the show. When I got with Master P, I mastered the business. And now I'm trying to extend that by bringing my family in so I can teach my family this show mm-hmm. business in case something is to ever happen to me. My wife is in control of everything. Not some motherfucker over here that don't know me or my family and controlling my whole, you know, estate like some of my homies that's rest in peace. Like, it's people that's not even their color running their shit mm-hmm. and running it up. Mm-hmm. I don't want that. I want my wife and my grandkids and my family to have the rights to Snoop Dogg everything. And, and if y'all want to get with them, y'all get with them. Did she have to learn the business? We learn on the fly. Okay. You know, because she been with me the whole way through, so a lot of it is just common sense. That's what people don't understand. This music industry is more common sense than anything. You know, one plus one is two. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not signing with you forever. Oh, I need a way out. And contracts were made to be broke. Mm-hmm. So as long as you keep an exit, you'll be all right. You ever had to break your Death Row Records. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know yeah, the yeah. niggas had me sign forever yeah, and yeah. death after and ever. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that word, what's that word? Perpetuity. Yeah, that shit. The one we can't spare. <laughs> <laughs> what, how, do you still smoke crazy? What's the last time? What, what's, how long can Snoop go without smoking? I know you gave I'm waiting for you time. niggas to hear up so I can get back in my uh. van, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you on the clock, Envy, while you, you bullshit. You the only person lit up in here. Yeah, you I know, yeah, but I would, I would never do that again. And I miss my lady up front to Queen. Where is she? Oh, she, 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 she retired. Miss Anita retired. Miss Anita retired. But she's having a great morning. life now. She, I so needed a hug from her this morning. Oh, she done made you feel so good. Yeah, you, I needed oh, that, that motherly Anita, love. That that's, that's, come on, man. Everything. Is it come annoying on. that all these people are into this marijuana business now that it's legal and people are trying to make money when meanwhile people who have been doing it like yourself for so long got criminal records behind it got criminal records but now all these people are coming in and gonna get rich off of it that might have opposed it before. It's cool. It's America. It's what they do. They steal our shit and make it theirs. Always. Get used to it. But the point is that, you know, if you get smart and you sharpen up, you can actually, you know, financially gain from this. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the beauty of it is that it's making more black millionaires. It's making more businessmen. It's making more people focus on not being a, a, a street dealer, but a Fortune 500 dealer. And if you really look at us as drug dealers, from the cocaine era, heroin, Weed to everything. We were the greatest to ever do it. The greatest to ever do it. And now you're going to legalize it? If you take those parameters and those ramifications off of those criminals, not criminals now because you're legally getting money off of it, and not make them criminals, we'll show you how to get this money. Man, Big Meech could have ran a Fortune 500 company. Man, please. Easily. Now, 50 said you won't put the weed down to, to, for shooting. That's that's what he did say. <laughs> I couldn't help it. But but I, when I was Pastor Swift, I did, you know, give myself a moment to, you know, find my character. And, but Pastor Swift is a, he's a, he's a sinner that's changed his life. So, okay. you know, most preachers are like that. They got to come from the world in order to express the world to you. He can't be flawless and clean. He's got to come from that side in order to be able to relate to you, to know that he changed his life to help you try to change your life. That's every human on this planet. That's why I hate this whole cancel culture era that we How in. How can they? Exactly. Humans will always fail How many times you been canceled, nigga? Because they canceled you about seven times. I remember that. that. At least once a year. <laughs> At least. More than that. But what does it mean? Nothing. That's the algorithm. That's the algorithm. That's some You're fucking right. computer telling people that you don't like this and don't like this. But people are people. They have their own emotions, their own feeling, and you should be able to speak for yourself and not some majority of people speak for you. And we love you commentating Olympics and all the fights too, man. That, that sounds that's so, lane. so much better. That's than, my lane? Yes, it seems yeah. like you enjoy it. Yeah, that's right. So like you have better. so much fun. What isn't Snoop's lane? What I can't know. you do? He can cook with Martha Stewart. He can cook with Martha Stewart. He's a commentator. <laughs> I want to know what you've, told, what you've said no to. <laughs> what I said? Uh, Every, uh, I'm sure it's so much. Bungee jumping. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was that could a, go wrong. They wanted me to play a woman in... Uh, some kind of TV show, and they wanted me to wear a dress. Oh. So I was like, Nope. Uh, next rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you always seem so cool, calm, and collected. Is 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 it because of of the weed? Because have you all have you dealt with anxiety your whole life, or is this something you just noticing? Um, I think I dealt with it my whole life because I grew up in a in a great great neighborhood, but it was so much going on. Mm-hmm whether it was 
people make it in sports, drug dealers, gang violence, you know, positive people. It was just a lot I seen. And I was able to be out in the mix. My mother allowed me to go outside and to, and to be a kid, you know what I'm saying, and to learn and to grow. And I feel like it taught me how to, like, deal with life. Because when you see life up close and personal, when you deal with death at an early age, when you deal with life, when you're dealing with, you know, mental health, it just prepares you to practice to get ready for it as an adult. So I feel like all of my things that I learned as a kid prepared me as a, as a man for what I'm dealing with now. Yeah, I don't know how you're doing it this week, my brother. Mm-hmm. I would have canceled everything. Man, I, I wanted to. I was, like, when I got the news, I had, like, a, a show that night. And I just I went to my room. I cried a little bit. And I was like, damn. What would my mama want me to do? Mm-hmm. You know, she would want me to get in front of these people and give them a show. And I went out there and I gave it to them. And the last song I played was Stand By Me. God. And it's man. a particular part of the song where it say, uh, I won't cry, I won't cry. And I took my glasses off and I didn't cry. And I, in my heart I wanted to, but I just was like, I can't. And they, they was giving it back to me. And I was like, I got to keep doing this. My mama talking to me, telling me, you better not stop. You better keep going. You better keep doing what God blessed you to do, and I'm going to be with you the whole step of the way. Have you and Dre got a chance to love on each other? Because I know yeah. he just lost yeah. one of his anchors in his life. And that's crazy because I had called him and sent him a positive message mm-hmm. the day before my mother passed away, just being his friend. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he got the message, and he hit me back. He was like, can I post it? I'm like, yeah, go ahead, cuz. Like, you know, people need to know that how we get out behind closed doors, that mm-hmm. we really love each other. And he posted, then the next day I get the news about my mama, and he hit me on FaceTime. He's like, man, my mom, because him and my mom was cool. You know, his mom and my mom were very cool, so. Just checking on me, making sure I'm straight. Mm-hmm. That's what we do as brothers. I got a lot of lot of positive calls, so that's why my spirit is right. Mm-hmm. Minister Farrakhan um, gave me probably the greatest prayer I ever heard in my life mm. to let me know that my mother being out of body is her being present with Allah. Mm. And that's that's the that's the thrill of life mm-hmm. to get to that point. 100%. We're sending you positive energy, Absolutely. love, and light always, Snoop, man. Because you, you, you're such a light to the world, so we, we got to make sure that you always are where you need to be. You hey, know? man, I'm, I'm just a reflection of my mother, man. She, she taught me everything I know. You know, shout out to my daddy for being there and teaching me how to be a man. My mother taught me all of the love, the qualities that you see in me, the, the, the storytelling, the the happiness, the fun, mm-hmm. the joy. That was my mother. She was the life of the party. You know what I'm saying? She was all of that. To me, she was my best friend for my first 10 years in this world. So my little brother was born. And then, you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. know how that go. Absolutely. She was with the little brother. She the little brother became my <laughs> it, it had to be. Hey, I got kids. I understand. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's why you so loving. Because you definitely the type to be like, man, all oh, y'all come eat, man. Come eat. We got food over here. That's how we get out, man. My mother, <laughs> my mother is so special. When my uncle, you know, he was on drugs. And he had a son, which was my cousin, and he was in one of those homes. And I was uh, I was like 13 years old, and my mother talked to me and my brother, and she was like, I'm going to adopt Marvin. And she went and adopted my little brother and gave him our last name. Mm. And his birthday was on the same day as mine. Wow. So imagine adopting your cousin, his birthday the same day as yours, and now you got to split all your gifts, split all of this. And it, it didn't even, I didn't even have no envy towards him. I actually loved him and I loved my mother more. Now that I'm thinking about it, for her looking out for family and adopting him and giving him our last name and just showing that kind of love. And that's who I am to this day. I'm like, I'm an exact, you know, replication of who she is. That's, it's absolutely. a beautiful thing that you were able to do great things for her too, for her to see you blossom into who you are. That was the beauty. And, she, and you know what's crazy? She dreamed of me being a preacher. I can still see that happening. Right. So, but look at what I'm playing on BMS. Mm-hmm. That's right. Before she passed away. Mm. So it's like this is the spirit of everything just coming back full circle. And I made a gospel album, yeah. right? Because I had never. I made it for my mother, and my grandmother. My grandmother had passed away, but when I had made the record, I had my mother come to the studio and I played it from top to bottom with all of the musicians, and she was so happy because she was fighting for me for so many years in the church to defend me, and I didn't give her nothing to fight with. Wow. So she would have to defend you to the, like, oh, your, your son making all the this secular yeah, music? absolutely, yeah. And I finally gave her something. He gave her some ammunition. Wow. You know what she said? She said, now I don't have to talk no more. You can fight for yourself. Ooh. Yes. That was heavy. Ooh. 
I was heavy. You know, if I, I always wondered, like, you know, when you thought about, like, what C. Dolores Tucker was doing to you back in the day, did you ever, do you look back now and say, well, she was right, kind of? She was right. All of them was right. We was young and dumb, and, you know, we needed aunties. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know how to talk. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. When your auntie, you got certain aunties that'll be like, come over here, boy, let me talk to you. Then you got certain aunties, like, I'm going to beat your ass, come here. You run from them. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what it was. And remember, we were teenagers or either becoming young adults so we could use our voice back like, shut up. You ain't talking to me like that. Mm -hmm. But if you got the right auntie, you respect him and you like, yeah, auntie, sure. Uh -huh. Like Maxine, Queen Man, Maxine please. Waters. We don't play no games with Maxine Waters. Mm -hmm. No games. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. she's a frontliner. Mm -hmm. And she's always been our auntie. She's always put her arms around us and not try to scold us, but teach us. It's a big difference. Yeah, we got to do that conversation. Because, I mean, your your evolution alone is, it needs to be documented, man. People need to see that. Hey, I'm I'm trying every day, Charlamagne. I'm just trying to be better every day at, at, at mastering me. And once people understand how to master themselves, then we're going to be a better world. Instead of trying to duplicate or be like somebody else, be yourself. That's the easiest shit you can do. I saw you working with Beyond Meat, too. So oh, yeah. I know you're not a, are you a vegan? No, right? Sometimes. About it? <laughs> I say sometimes. Look, that's sometimes. Time. You gotta ease that shit on the motherfucker. I'm, I know <laughs> I'm I know I'm wrong for saying this shit, but I've been programmed for so many years it's hard to deprogram a motherfucking taste buzz. But I'm gonna start eating for health rather than taste. Mm -hmm. You know what Which I'm is saying? difficult. You it's gotta varied. eat to live and not live to eat. That's what they Especially say. Especially being in the See, road. you could say that because you've been doing it for how many no, years? No, no, I'm not a vegan. Oh, okay. I still, well, yeah. What are you talking about then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just asking because I've seen the Beyond Dogs and everything. I get down with them. And I try. You know what I'm saying? So I think all you can do is do the best you can. Like, I eat chicken twice a week. That's my thing. And so I just cut back on it because since I don't eat red meat, I don't eat seafood, I don't eat pork, sometimes I eat chicken a little bit and I the, make sure it's organic. The thing about vegan food, if it's seasoned right, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the key. You can't have a square from Delaware trying to cook. You got to have somebody from the hood that know how to whoop whop it and boop bop it. Because mm -hmm. I went to two trucks, and one of them was just a, hey, what would you like? Would you? Yeah, okay, then I went to, what's up, my nigga, what you want? Exactly. The what's up, my nigga, you want truck was like, <laughs> mm. Or well, slutty vegan. They're burgers oh, boy, are... and how, in Atlanta? Yes. yes. And they fry game is amazing mm -hmm. with all that, uh, what is that sauce they put on the something? Mm -hmm. uh, Lowry's. 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 Yeah, they put that Lowry's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lowry's, the burgundy sauce. <laughs> yeah, I can never go vegan. Them, them, them barbecue wings off the grill, bro. You get some I like vegan a good burger. When they black on the man, end, come on now. You can do that vegan too, though. It's getting bad. But I will say all vegan food is not good for you because sometimes those things are so processed too, you just got to be careful what you're eating. That's crazy that we have to like really monitor what we eat. And that, and I'm, I'm just so blessed that we're aware now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for many deal. years we would put things inside of us that would deteriorate us and make our family have certain diseases. Cancer. Now we have, Diabetes, yeah. Now we have enough caution to cancer, understand yeah. and awareness to say, I ain't gonna eat that. Cause my oldest son, right? I call him the smartest, dumbest motherfucker I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because this nigga been telling me for about 15 years about. That water, that alkaline, alkaline water, water shit. Yeah. Don't eat meat. Lunch don't meat eat especially. Animals. Don't da 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 da. All this shit. And now look at the world. I'm like, I used to call you dumb, but you the smartest <laughs> motherfucker I done ever met. That's why I say he the smartest, dumbest motherfucker I ever met because the shit he used to say back then sounded dumb to me. Mm -hmm. But now as I'm older, I'm mm -hmm. like, damn, you is the smartest motherfucker I, I know. But that's what breaking generational curses is all about. Like you said, a word awareness. It's a lot of things growing up in certain environments. We grew up in certain hoods. We didn't have that awareness. We no. didn't have awareness for mental health. We didn't have awareness for what to eat. We knew what we knew, and that was that environment. I come home and have a bologna sandwich. <laughs> we just trying to survive. Disgusting. Did you have to take this outside? The edge off, yeah. Edge off. And yeah. I used to put it in the microwave and let it bubble up. Oh, in the no, you got to no, put, put that in the frying pan. pan. We put that in the frying pan and let it bubble, bubble up, up in the middle. And come on, now. You don't even use a fork. You just turn it over with your hand. Come like, on, now. Come on, now. Bubble up. Well, listen, Algorithm is coming out soon. Let, let's Snoop go November smoke, 12th. man. Is it we appreciate you for joining us. Icon brother? living. Hey, Absolutely. man, y'all got my spirit right. I didn't know how I was going to be this morning. Um, we love you. You got our spirit right, I love y'all right too, too, man. And this is, what I'm, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be back in front of people, chopping it up, you know, representing my mama through the spirit of who I am. Absolutely. And being strong and being positive and not being sad and crying and being weak, but celebrating the life and just thanking God that I had an angel for a mother.
But that's not weak, though. We love crying cry, crying yeah, and giving weak. yourself a moment to grieve, that ain't weak at all. That's you, human. That's human. But what, you wanna, can we play a record off the album? Mm-hmm. Which one you want? Let's like? play Anxiety. Mm-hmm. Are you, unless you want to play the uh, the Pain record? I like I that. Oh, anxiety, no, I don't want to cry right now. <laughs> I like that song with Eric Ballinger, a little throwback feel. Oh, we could do the Red Light, like man record. We could do that anxiety go hard, Kiss though. And, and, which one y'all want here? Matter of fact, who Let's signed? Let's do something upbeat. Let's do something upbeat. <laughs> Who's something upbeat? Anxiety's upbeat? Yeah. Yeah, it is a beat. Yeah. Go ahead, Charlemagne requested anxiety. Let's ah, play that anxiety. Oh, Charlemagne, Charlemagne wants anxiety. <laughs> anxiety. All right. Well, they didn't give it to us, so I'm just telling y'all now, Def Jim, if you're listening, I'm burning it off of the streaming uh-huh. game so we can play. Go ahead. Burn up. Burn up. Let's All get right. that anxiety record. Enough said. Here it goes. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Cheers. 